Take these two objects and tell me, which of them is soup? Unless your brain has clay batter instead of grey matter, then you would have said the one on the left. But by the end of this video, you may think differently. I was reading the dictionary last weekend to prove murder had to be premeditated when I came across the definition of soup. A liquid dish, typically savoury and made by boiling meat, fish or vegetables. That may seem reasonable at a glance, but first of all, the word typically means usually, so sometimes this just isn't true. We can remove this entire section from the definition. So a soup is a liquid dish? That's pretty garbage, but even worse, there is a second definition. A substance or mixture regarded as resembling soup in appearance or consistency. So just a thing that looks like soup or feels like soup. Already we have far too broad of a definition. Soup is a liquid dish or something that kind of looks like soup or kind of feels like soup. You know what fits in that definition? A bowl of cement, pure mercury, Axe body spray if you use enough, all liquids, all soup. A painting of soup kind of looks like a soup. Warmed milk with floating cheese would feel like a soup. I think, I haven't tried it, I'm not a monster. Basically everything is soup. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. And yes, icebergs are absolutely soup. Look at this soup. If I were to put some bread into it, it would absorb some of the liquid. If I kept dipping bread in, more of the liquid would be absorbed until there is virtually none left. Now there is solid food holding the moisture of the soup. So is the end product soup? If you say no, can you tell me the moment that it goes from being soup to being another food? At what percentage of liquid absorption does it go from soup to solid food? At 50% liquid absorption? 99%? 100%? There's no real place to set that definition. Sadly, the world hasn't come up with an agreed upon liquid percentage a dish has to be for it to be soup. When you dip bread into soup and eat it, you are eating the soup. You can make the other food hold soup, but it doesn't stop the soup being soup. So for now we can say, whatever you add to soup, no matter if all the liquid is absorbed, the end product is still soup. Now we have one solid rule. Soup plus food equals soup. Now let's talk about temperature. What about if you freeze soup? Solid soup is no longer a liquid dish, but through science, we can prove that this is soup. Since most of you are watching this instead of doing your science homework, here's some help. A change in state, like freezing or melting, is not chemical but physical. The actual substance is exactly the same. It's just solid soup or frozen soup, but definitely still soup. If you heat it up enough, it will melt into the same components that made it up before. What about heating up soup? If you heat it slowly, then the temperature will rise, and all of the ingredients, including the bowl, will melt together, resulting in a mixture of soup, but still containing the same chemicals. If you heat it quickly and burn the soup, it might not taste great, but it will just become a soup of carbon. So, changing the temperature of soup does not alter the soup status as soup. 2. Soup plus or minus energy equals soup. So our only limitation left is the starting dish. What ingredients must a dish have to be considered a soup? There might be a few staple things that are in most soups, but different cultures have so many different ingredients like bird saliva, dirt, bat, deer placenta, and if you say those aren't soups then you're racist. So it can basically be anything. Let's just say it has to be food, or it has to have calories. Any starting liquid dish containing calories can have the liquid removed from it, or be completely frozen and it is still soup. Which means these are completely, inarguably, both soup. And this is where I thought I was stuck. The title says everything is soup, not just foods. Surely things like the Mona Lisa, solar panels and rocks aren't soup, right? Well that's where you're wrong. Rocks are absolutely soup. I did some research on what a calorie is and I got some very complex answers, but I'll explain it in the simplest way possible. All we have to do is use E equals MC squared. First off, a couple of things. A calorie is a unit of energy, about 4,200 joules. This is a rock. It weighs one kilo. Now, E equals MC squared means energy equals mass multiplied by the speed of light squared. Since the speed of light is just a number or a constant, this shows that the energy of an object is proportional to its mass. Anything that has mass has an equivalent amount of energy. And since this rock has a weight of one kilo, it has a total of 21 trillion calories, making this rock a goddamn soup. Anything with mass at any temperature is a soup. So whether you like it or not, you are soup. To be fair, you can't use the calories in a rock as nutrients for your body. They aren't edible calories for humans, but they do have calories. Sadly, I haven't been able to prove much more than mass is soup. It's not like light, happiness, or abstract concepts like truth are soup, right? <laughs> of course they are! We already explained how mass contains energy, which means it has calories, and is food, which is a soup. We stopped doing rules a while ago, but three, mass equals soup. And now we'll prove four, energy equals soup. But converting energy into matter is a little bit more difficult. 
I learned a lot of Einsteinian physics for this video about soup, and I'd like to share this one sentence I found with you all. The first step would be to accelerate electrons with a high energy laser to just below the speed of light and smash them into a slab of gold, which would create a beam of light a billion times more intense than the light from the sun. The first step. Basically, the Big Bang was a ball of pure energy. A lot of it. More energy than your brother after two liters of Fanta. At least double, and when this energy expanded stupidly fast, it became mass and made the universe, consisting of llamas, cookies, and less important things. So, the simplified idea of how to make energy into mass today is to accelerate two light particles called photons, yes this video is still about soup, at each other and when they hit they will produce an electron and a positron. These things have mass. Not a lot, but some. And since they have mass, they are soup. Therefore, any and all light is soup. <laughs> okay, four. Energy equals soup, and that opens a whole new Pandora's box. Happiness is a result of dopamine, which has this chemical structure, mass soup. The concept of truth only exists within our human minds. Our thoughts determine what's true. Thoughts are created from neurons firing electrical signals. Electrical signals are obviously energy, boom, soup. And I can rightly say, the truth is soup.